Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Sean Gray and I am coming to you live from Waste Free Edmonton's Instagram. Woo! Um, thank you for uh, joining us. I know we're just getting started here. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Sean Gray. Uh, I am currently the manager of public outreach for Waste Free Edmonton. Um, Waste Free Edmonton is a grassroots, non-for-profit, non volunteer-led organization um, who... Uh, oh, one second here. Emma should be joining right soon here from Art Adventures. Oops. Emma should be joining us right about now. But yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is our event, Wine and Waste. Uh, we are here to chat about waste in Edmonton. And um, I'm gonna actually throw in a little background Christmas music here. Uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, take up too much sound, but uh, just have something in the background. Um, and yeah, uh, I hope we're gonna have a great evening. Um, I have my glass of wine here. Um, now, the beauty of wine and waste is that's what Emma and I will be partaking in. Um, but you um, can drink whatever you want. If that's water, if that's wine, if that's juice, if that's kombucha, if that's tea, if that's coffee, whatever you want. We just want you to come hang out with us. And, um, we chose wine because both Emma and I are, love having a in the evening, and we just thought it'd be a great way to kind of have a relaxed, chill conversation um, because we're both passionate about um, waste reduction here in Edmonton. So um, we're just kind of waiting for Emma to join here. Um, but yeah, I can introduce uh, a little bit about myself and a little bit about Waste Free Edmonton. Um, so, like I said, Waste Free Edmonton is a grassroots non profit organization. Um, that um, specializes in um, creating a community around waste reduction in the city of Edmonton. Um, we've been around for about two or three years now. Um, and we were actually, we wrote the single-use plastic bylaw that the city of Edmonton used as a template. Um, that was obviously put on hold because of COVID. There's a lot of um, confusion around um, you know, if single-use plastics are a vector for carrying COVID. Um, we've since learned that they're not any more of a vector than anything else. Um, so, yeah, hopefully at some point the city of Edmonton can move forward with that single-use plastic ban. Um, so how I came into um, working with Waste for Edmonton, and by working I mean volunteer because it's completely volunteer-run, um, and completely grassroots is earlier this year, actually almost a year ago now, um, Waste for Edmonton was recruiting volunteers and I had been following them for quite a while, almost since their inception really, and really appreciating what they were doing. And so um, I, I sent a, uh, you know, uh, my resume in to become part of their public outreach team um, because I had started my waste journey and um, I really wanted to volunteer with an organization that was doing the same. And, um, you know, uh, they we had an interview, they joined Emma. Hi. It's working. I'm sorry. Made it. Yay. <laughs> yeah. It kept, uh, it kept timing you out. So third time's the charm. Third time's the charm. It's great to have you. So, tell, so interview process, I'll listen and then I'll dive in. You, you saved the audience from uh, me just monologuing about how I joined Waste for Edmonton and um, waste reduction advocacy in Edmonton today. Um, so I was just telling how I joined right before the pandemic hit. And we had this big whole summer plan where we were going to go to all these festivals and events. We were going to run like a zero waste fashion show. And then COVID hit and we weren't allowed to have any events. And yeah. so um, we were so excited when you came on board too. We were like, great, this opens up so much, so many more possibilities. But 
Um, no, I don't think I saved anyone at all. I think it's great. Um, in my experience, anyways, Waste Free Edmonton has been so great at welcoming new volunteers. We're always looking to grow and expand our team. And like you said, it's all volunteer. It's all passionate people who um, just want to, oh, hi, Tanya, who just want to uh, do their part and come together and make a little bit more of a difference than we can um, on our own. So I think yeah. it's great to hear. I, I think that was the thing that attracted me to Waste Free Edmonton is that it's actually um, a cohesive unit where individuals can come together behind one banner and advocate for waste reduction and also have conversations like this where we can talk about how to reduce not only our own personal um, waste impacts, but how we as individuals can create a society that is um, zero waste or at least on the journey to become zero waste. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hence um, the creation of tonight. <laughs> wine and waste. Oh, well, cheers to wine and cheers waste. Cheers to the first wine and waste. Uh, thank you so, for joining us. Like we said, this is wine and waste. Um, Emma and I had talked about different ways that we could engage um, people in Edmonton about uh, waste reduction. Uh, because of COVID, we unfortunately can't hold in-person meetups or events as, um, as well as we could in the past. Um, so we thought this might be a fun way to engage with people and have conversations um, about waste reduction and particularly waste reduction around the holiday because holidays, because we have Christmas coming up and yes. um, Christmas is one of those holidays that unfortunately is extremely wasteful. Um, uh, and I was actually um, going into stats about this evening just because I love to see numbers like that. Um, Canadians, according to the Canadian government and studies that they've sponsored, um, Canadians create about 25% more waste around Christmas than they do the rest of the year. And particularly Albertans um, create the most waste per person out of any province in Canada by a significant amount. Like the, the average of waste generation by Canadians was about 700 kilograms per year per person. Alberta's average was a thousand. So we're like significantly higher per person. Um, so, which is why I think an organization like Waste Free Edmonton is so important to Alberta because we do produce the most waste per person. And it's important for us to have conversations about how we as individuals can reduce that waste. Absolutely. And I do just want to say for everybody kind of trickling in, whether you're watching live or a little bit later, um, it's so different for everyone. Like everybody's waste reduction journey is different. Even listening to Sean say, you know, I love to hear the numbers. For me, I hide from the numbers because I find them really uh, overwhelming and soul crushing. So to just think, uh, I don't need to know all of that stuff. Just this is how I could do a little bit better. Um, and there's no one right or wrong way. I think they are super important and you do need to be educated, um, but don't feel like in order to create less waste, you have to be, fit this perfect little box or you have to fit all of your garbage in a jar or you have to, whatever it is, it's all about uh, just creating a little bit less and being a little bit more mindful. And for, that's exactly what Wine and Waste is kind of going to be all about is bringing people together, not just for us to connect with each other, but for us to connect with all of you, for you to feel like you've found your community that you can connect with, especially like you said already during COVID when we're all so isolated. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, we can't do in person together, but we thought this would be a nice alternative. We'll tell you guys a little bit uh, later, more information too. There is going to be a virtual meetup coming up in December as well. So if you would actually like to get a chance to speak and connect with each other instead of just listening to the two of us, <laughs> that'll be a great opportunity for you as well to, to kind of get involved with your people. And also, if you have any questions or you like something we're talking about or you want clarification on something we bring up, feel free to like post comments, post questions. Um, we're going to both be watching the chat and seeing how you engage with us. Um, otherwise, we're just going to like have a fun time, hang out, have a glass of wine and just you know have, a, have an intimate conversation about uh, our waste journeys and how we became um, aware of the waste problem that not only Albertans face, uh, not only Canadians face, but the world at large faces, um, and how that's becoming more of a mainstream conversation for everyone, I think, um, about waste reduction. Mm -hmm. So um, Emma, how did you, what, where did your waste journey start? I 
for me, I, it was one of my jobs. I was working on the weekend and one of my coworkers, his name is Eric, came in and he was so exhausted and he picks up, it was just this little reusable coffee cup. It was a keep cup. And he goes, oh, I haven't had coffee since Thursday. And I was like, well, why not? Well, my coffee maker at my house broke and I already made a promise to myself, like, unless I had my reusable cup, I wouldn't be getting any like coffee to go. And I just haven't had time to come back and get it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And he very much like you had stats and numbers. He's like, this many coffee cups get thrown out in Edmonton and Alberta and Canada, like every day, week, year. They can't be, I, at this point, this was, I want to say maybe five years ago now, I thought coffee cups could be recycled. <laughs> so uh, I never gave it a second thought. I thought, you know, have your coffee, drink it, rinse the cup, throw it in the bin and you're good to go. But with the mixed materials, it like wrapping paper, which we'll talk about for our, our holiday specific waste, um, doesn't get recycled. And so that's where I started. I said, okay, then I don't need to use these disposable coffee cups. And then next thing you know, you're wondering why there are so many plastic straws and plastic lids and plastic cutlery that come in plastic bags with napkins that get thrown out. And then the plastic produce bags that go in more plastic bags. So it uh, quickly became a black hole of single use plastics that um, I found really overwhelming. And so that's why I reached out to Waste Free Edmonton. As soon as I found out about them, it actually lined up quite well with, with my own waste reduction journey. So got involved with the organization and can't wait to trash wrapping paper later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to read wrapping paper. The library is going to be open. Yes. <laughs> Officially. What about you? Before we dive into uh, trash and wrapping paper, what got you started on your journey? Well, I definitely can relate to the horror of realization of coffee cups, not realizing that they can be recycled because of the wax uh, lining inside. Um, so as a semi-professional coffee drinker, um, when I discovered that, it really, uh, it really shook me to my core. Um, you know, I, uh, at, a, at a high school, I originally went to um, Nate for radio and television and media studies. Um, and then kind of fell out of favor with that. And then I went tree planting and became a little bit more of a uh, tree hugging hippie. And I worked at an organic grocery store. And really it was food waste that started my, um, the, the shattering of my waste illusion was to see how much food, even at an organic food store, actually does get wasted. And to their credit, the place I was working at did attempt to compost a lot of it and did give it away to uh, the youth emergency shelter, but there was still a lot of waste that wasn't being sold. Um, and then from there, um, you know, once that illusion of, of the waste society um, gets shattered, you start noticing it everywhere. You see everything that gets thrown out, everything you're throwing out, you start, your where does this end up? You're walking around, you see litter everywhere, you see cigarette butts everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it, it just like your awareness of waste becomes almost overwhelming. Like I was having sensory overload of realizing how wasteful our society actually is. And, um, you know, that led me to the master composter recycling program through the city of Edmonton. So I got that training and it was really awesome. I'd recommend it to everyone that I ever meet who's living in the city of Edmonton. If you have the ability to do the master composter recycler program, it was so much fun and I learned so much. Um, and so, yeah, really from there, it started with food waste and then going into the coffee cups, mm -hmm. um, water bottles too. I was never a fan of disposable water bottles, um, but really learning more about the bottled water industry. It was all the more reason to get a reusable water bottle that I just clean and refill all the time. And because I drink a lot of water, um, so I, it's just nice to have a refillable water bottle all the time. Um, so yeah, so that's really where, where it started. And then, like I said, once it's shattered, you just, you're so motivated to try and change things and try and change your own behavior. And also, um, I'm, I'm glad you said it earlier, um, that waste reduction is a journey. And, you know, I don't think Waste Free Edmonton would ever want to shame people for creating waste or um, being wasteful. It's more of a, we all want to try and be better and create awareness around wasteful habits so that 
we can reduce our environmental impact, so we, that we can reduce plastic in our oceans, so that we can reduce the amount of food that gets wasted or put into landfills and it doesn't decompose properly. Yeah, um, absolutely. So it's, it's really nice to meet like-minded people like yourself and like everyone else who's Waste for Edmonton and like all you people listening who you care about waste reduction, you want to know how you can do more, you're trying to do your little bit, um, but that it's a journey and to not like shame yourself or feel bad if you're not doing it perfectly because nothing's perfect. Absolutely. So I want to shift gears and let's start talking holiday waste. So um, I just want to ask what's the first thing because I know we talked a little bit about this veil that gets lifted and you see all of it. When you think of holiday waste, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, for me, it's, it's like presents. Um, yeah. uh, an abundance of maybe unnecessary presents. Um, I remember, especially as a kid, getting a lot of plastic toys, that none of which I had any or have any idea what happened to them. Um, and so... Uh, and part of my, my waste journey was um, asking my friends and family to not receive gifts because it was something that I didn't, um, I wanted to create a gift of presence, of experience, and um, I think that's significantly more meaningful. Not that I can't find presents that are worth it to gift to people, but it's, it's definitely something that um, I thought of presence and little like kinder surprise egg toys that aren't actually toys they're just pieces of plastic that no one ever uses or they don't work or um you know those crackers those christmas crackers that you pull yeah. apart and there's the paper crowns inside of them and then there's also um a, a small toy that again is a worthless piece of plastic that never gets used um you know and so those are the big things for me that's what i think of when i think christmas is um, presence and useless plastic. Yeah. Somebody in the comments, Maggie said packaging. Everyone in the comments, like if Sean and I are asking each other questions, please know you're invited to answer as well. If you ever have anything you want to share, suggestions, questions, answers, um, please feel free to be as active as you'd like in those comments. Um, and I actually agree. The first thing that comes to my mind is usually packaging as well. So whether it's the packaging that we put on it before we gift like the wrapping paper and stuff like that, or the actual holiday packaging and like the plastic, like when you open the boxes, there's like those plastic bubbles or the blister packs. Or um, I remember one of my girlfriends uh, last year, she started kind of getting in on this waste reduction journey. She was like, I found these candy canes, but the candy canes were wrapped in plastic and then that was in plastic. And then there was a box and then the box was in more, like it was like a salad theme thing with more Christmas see stuff on it and um, yeah I, I think it's one of those you just start seeing all of the excess and all of the, the packaging is a really big one that comes to my mind and also um stocking stuffers I feel like are oh, yeah, stocking stuffers. for those useless plastic gimmicky things or just holiday branded stuff that you know you you appreciate for the week or two leading up to Christmas and then maybe a couple days after and then it either gets given to Goodwill or if the reuse center were still open, I'm sure lots of that very holiday specific stuff gets, gets sent that way as well. So um, yeah, stocking, stocking stuffers are a tricky one. It's, it's so fascinating that a holiday that is um, based around, you know, appreciation and loving of your family and your loved ones um, that we, that, we have this material lens that the way we express love to people is through giving them things. Even if those things are not necessarily things that they need or things that they want, it's just the idea of like, I'm giving you something so you know that I care about you. And uh, it, it's definitely uh, taken years of conversation with family members and myself and my friends to um, dismantle that thinking because I can remember as a kid getting lots of gifts and having garbage bags full of wrapping paper, you know, yes, paper, yes, that, yes. paper that not only, um, for those of you just joining us, um, wrapping paper is, it doesn't get recycled. It's not recyclable um, because the ink that is printed on it is so dense that it doesn't make it economically feasible to recycle, nor is it extremely difficult to recycle. Um, so all of that paper just ends up in landfill. And so, you know, when I figured that out, that you start 
start to think about all the past Christmases and just in my personal experience, how much wrap, like garbage bags each year of wrapping paper that just are there to make the presents look nice and then get thrown out. And just think of all the families that have experiences similar to mine. Um, that's a lot of paper that just gets wasted with really no practical purpose other than making it look Christmassy, um, which I appreciate. I think that uh, we as humans, we appreciate colorful, whimsical, um, pretty things. And um, I think there's more beauty in gift giving that can be found than just giving those kind of like surface level gifts. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, when we were initially talking about what wine and waste could look like, Sean and I had shared a couple stories about, you know, what Christmas has looked like for us in the past and how we started those conversations with family. So Sean, I apologize. This is a record for you, but <laughs> um, I want to share with everybody else who's just watching. I remember when I first um, tried to kind of cut that idea that uh, I need presents at Christmas time for all of my family members. I, I'd been working for a while to try to get no presents in the family and it didn't take because you, you can say, I don't want anything. I don't want anything. And then they'll still like they're, it's from, you know, the goodness of their heart or they see something that just reminds them of you, or they just feel pressured by like all of the consumer um, pressure that's put on us every holiday. But I um, gave everybody a card and in the card I said, instead of buying you a gift, I've made an anonymous $500 donation to XYZ charity. But just this idea, even for me, that like if I didn't spend $500 at Christmas, then I was somehow letting my family down. Like I couldn't just show up for dinner or I couldn't just be present with them or I couldn't host somebody for dinner. I still had to go out and spend my money. And yes, it went to a great cause and yes, it feels good. But why do we need a holiday to to do that? Like you could be giving 25 bucks a month all year or yeah, right? So just this idea that you have to spend all of your money at Christmas time and if you don't, you're letting people down. Um, like think if if somebody that you love didn't give you a gift, would you feel less loved? I mean, I know I wouldn't. I certainly don't value my relationships based on, on what I open up under the tree on Christmas. Um, so yeah, just kind of giving yourself that same grace that you would give to them and removing that pressure or that feeling that you need to spend money to show that you care, um, I think is a really... Absolutely. How did you start? Because I know you also said that uh, it was a work in progress having those conversations with family. Well, um, yeah. Well, originally it started off as me, uh, when I was having conversations with people about how, um, you know, there's a lot of waste around Christmas, particularly when it be, uh, pertains to gifts. I told everyone that I wasn't going to be giving gifts. There was um, a long, like maybe three or four years where I explicitly told all my friends and family has been like, I'm not getting anyone gifts. Um, and then I would supplement that by throughout the year, I would give random gifts that I'd either find or something that I had come across, like a really cool book that I read and then handed it off to people. And I would give gifts throughout the year. Or if I ever came across something that really spoke to me, um, then I would purchase that and give it to them but I wasn't specifically buying gifts for Christmas time mm -hmm. um, unless I found something really meaningful um, and then like you said I also had that experience and when I I would ask people to not get me gifts they would still on Christmas day or Christmas Eve or around the holidays they would still feel obligated and be like hey listen I know you're not getting anything but I just want to give you I wanted to give you something mm -hmm. and so I, and you can't get mad at people for doing that because they're doing it because they love you and they care yeah. about you and um, it's, it's, it's such an interesting conversation to have with people because it is something that is programmed into us. Um, and, and like you were talking about, like how we can start to dismantle that and share experiences with people. And that's really what drove it home uh, is telling people like, don't give me a gift. Like, let's go do something together. Like I wanna spend time with you or um, tell me a story. Uh, I know I've done this with uh, like uh, my aunts and uncles who um, are, are are older, who are from my grandma's generation. And I'd be like, don't give me money or anything. Like, tell me a story from your youth, like sh share your wisdom with me. Um, and so that's been really cool. Uh, and I feel like that's a 
a really great gift to give is like the gift of wisdom or the gift of storytelling. Um, also making uh, like cards or pictures for people um, has been a really thoughtful thing. I've also, uh, I propagate spider plants. Um, I don't, I don't do it as much anymore as I did, but I used to have an operation of propagating spider plants. And so then I would propagate all these spider plants and then I would gift people the spider plants. And um, I actually gave one to a, one of my childhood best friends. I gave his dad a spider plant um, one Christmas and I came back the next Christmas and he had it in a South facing window and it was massive. It was probably 20 or 30 times the size it was when I gave it to him. I'm like, what have you been doing with this plant? He's like, nothing. It's just in a South facing window and I was watering it. And I was like, you have any nutrients or given it anything. He's like, no. And so he still has that spider plant and it's even bigger now. It's so um, funny and it's really cool. Because, like, right there behind <laughs> me, I have probably 20 spider plants propagating that are on their way out as Christmas gifts. So, if I have any friends or family watching, <laughs> I just wrecked part of your present. Um, yeah, they're plants and trading plants and sharing, absolutely. Um, and I get that no presence at all is really extreme for a lot of people. And even in my family now, like, for the most part, most of us don't in my immediate family, like my partner and my stepson, like we've got presents and we'll be doing gifts. And um, I think my mom still does not matter what I say, what I do, I will always get a gift, but they're very thoughtful. Like last year she got me um, grow lights for my plants and they're way more expensive than I would have ever paid. And I love them and I use it every day. So being very intentional and getting fewer gifts. Um, I think it's, it speaks volumes. Um, so what are some examples of experience gifts that you've given or like creative gifts that you've given uh, things you've made, you've used from recycled material or, um, you know, like experience gifts. I'm not going to just share ones that I've given. I also want to share ones that I've received. Um, oh, cool. Are, yeah. Please yeah, do. I've, I know it's kind of like Christmas time cliche, but the cookies in a jar, I love that when it's all of the dry ingredients. I have a girlfriend Who doesn't love getting cookies? every year. I love it. It's like permission to make yourself cookies. <laughs> and that's fantastic. A girlfriend of mine um, made me homemade granola last year. So oh my gosh, that's a great present. So good. Um, my neighbor across the street made us homemade Nutella which is also like absolutely amazing. So those are some of my favorite um, handmade items that I've received. Some that I've given, I am a maker. Um, obviously I'm from my Art Ventures account, which is my art education company, but I'm always learning how to make new things. And I kind of fall on these spirals. So last year, a girlfriend and I, we made all of our gifts. We made those reusable beeswax um, oh, cool. rubbers. Nice, oh, those are great. Yeah, For anyone who doesn't have in the audience, deal. you can, I know, uh, I can't remember their name for the life of me, but they're at Strat Strathcona Farmer's Market, but they make those uh, beeswax food wraps. I have probably about five or six of them, and they're amazing. I and use them so, so much. They're so easy to make. They're so I haven't bought saran wrap in years, and I feel so good about that. Yeah, yeah, so that's when we made, yeah, we made rim spray, we made, um, I usually make a batch or two of soap every year. And so if I'm oh. feeling particularly generous, I'll share that, but I love it a lot. So like, if I ever give you soap, I love you so much. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so um, I, I just want to like, uh, Maggie, uh, that's uh, what your name says, says my kids receive a date with my auntie and uncle, escape room and a sleepover, one of their favorite gifts. I love that. Oh, escape amazing. rooms are so much fun. And a sleepover with auntie and uncle are is the best. That's yeah. see, that's such a great gift because those are things that you remember. You know, yeah. um, toys Here's get lost. Painting toys class break. at the city arts center was messy fun. Arts classes. I know my stepson looks yes. like he goes to the arcade with one of his aunties. Same thing. Aunts and uncles can do some pretty awesome experience gifts. I gotta say. Uh, you, you know, um, that's funny we should bring up aunts and uncles because I am actually um, a fairly fresh uncle. I have one brother, and my one brother has a now 20-month-year-old. He's almost two. Um, and then in August, they just had twin girls. 
Um, so uh, it's been an amazing experience. It's really, um, uh, I felt like I've gone through this uh, maturity process, uh, particularly with um, the twin girls, because because of the pandemic, um, I'm the only family member that has been able to be around for them to participate in childcare. Mm -hmm. um, my, my mom lives in the city, but she's allergic to dogs and they have two big dogs. Um, so I've been the only one who can stay overnight to help them on a regular basis. So when they're first born, I lived with them, um, taking care of the babies uh, for the first like two or three months. And I've only since um, gone back um, a couple days a week now. Um, but we we're, it allows us to have these conversations because I'm part of Waste for Edmonton, because I consider myself a waste reduction advocate. I've been talking to my brother and sister-in-law a lot about, you know, consumption, uh, especially around children. And um, one of the values, you know, that they've really um, found and instilled in their parenting technique is they want to get as many things secondhand as possible. So almost all of their clothes um, for their oldest son and their twin girls were um, donated to them from friends who had had kids who had outgrown them. And um, they plan on doing the same thing because they have other friends that are pregnant now. So they're going to pass along all of these ki children's clothes as their kids outgrow them. Mm -hmm. And they're planning on getting other clothes from parents whose kids outgrow those clothes. And so they've injected themselves into this chain of secondhand clothing that's going through all these parents that have kids of varying age. And so that's been super cool. And that also applied to Christmas when we were talking about Christmas, because a lot of the toys they have um, are all secondhand. Now there's also grandparents to contend with and grandparents always want to buy things. Um, you know, like we were talking about how sometimes it's hard to break those um, buy show with love um, habits. Um, actually, this is a really good, so um, I'm going to go on a little bit of tangent here, Mark, because I'm glad that you asked that because they're using disposable ones. Um, sorry, Sean, do you want to just let, I don't know if oh, the comments sorry, are sorry, yeah. oh, So if you so, just so, want to so, read the comment before you reply to it so that people who are watching later might know what you're talking about. Just in case Sorry, this is my first live. I got so excited. No, so it's great. Mark, it's great. Mark asked, um, disposable diapers or reusable diapers? He also added, no pressure, no guilt. Um, he also grew up with hand-me-downs, which is awesome. Hand-me-downs are great. Um, and they actually, they've been using disposable diapers. And um, one of the interesting things that I, I found with, I used to live with someone who ran a day home. And um, one of the kids did use um, reusable diapers. Um, but they, they found that that child had like a lot of, rashes come out from these reusable diapers and it wasn't it might not be from the reusable diapers but i know that that experience kind of stuck with me as to like as a parent as as someone who's not a parent i don't really feel like i have an educated opinion about telling someone whether they should use disposable or reusable diapers i know that that's a huge waste issue um but i i, I would love to see a world where everyone's using reusable diapers um, as a new parent, I'm not sure how like mentally feasible that is for new parents, but I'm not a parent, so it's hard for me to comment on that. Um, but yeah, um, back to children's secondhand toys. Um, so this Christmas, um, I was talking to my sister-in-law because she has been being gifted a lot of secondhand toys. But when she brings them into the house now, she hides them in the basement. So my nephew never sees them. And I mean, he's only two, so it's pretty easy to hide a toy from him and then bring it out a couple months later. And he's like, it's a new toy, yay. Um, so when we were talking about gift giving, um, one of the things that I've been doing for my nieces and nephews is every birthday and Christmas, I put $50 into a savings account. Um, and then when they're 18, um, I'm gonna give them that money and be like, hey, I've saved this your whole life. I put $50 away every birthday and Christmas because I didn't want to buy you presents that you would that would you use for a little bit and then grow out of. So here's a bunch of money for your 18th birthday. Now let's go out and take me out for dinner or something like that. <laughs> um, but I, because she had so many of these excess toys, 
um, that she had gotten secondhand, she's like, why don't you go downstairs, pick out a toy, and then you can um, gift it to him for Christmas. So I got this giant play uh, pirate ship that is secondhand. Um, and what I'm going to do is because um, they still get flyers that end up on their doorstep. Um, they recently moved into a new house and um, it, I don't think they don't really use the flyers ever, but we always see them and we really just recycle them or in the summertime, I was taking them away for um, fire pits. Um, but I snagged a bundle. So I have a bundle of flyers that I'm just going to wrap the president in because he's a two year old and he's going to love ripping open paper. Um, but because this paper is recyclable, I'm just going to wrap it up, tie it up with the elastic band that's on the flyer already, and then just give it to him like that. Um, and then also, um, one of the gift ideas I had for my brother and my sister-in-law is to create, um, like to use whatever I can find in these flyers and other stuff around my house to create a no junk mail sign for them to put on their um, mailbox. And so it was kind of like this, this avalanche of ideas of using crafty secondhand reusable recycle ideas to make a Christmas present. That's awesome. I love that. So that was my tangent as a newly formed uncle about how I'm <laughs> um, with my nieces and nephews. <laughs> But no, I think that's great. So we talked a little bit about going from no gifts to experiences as gifts um, to secondhand gifts, handmade gifts. Uh, one of the ways that I find, I just want to touch on doing the fewer gifts thing is I know with my partner's family, um, instead of everybody buying a gift for everybody to kind of cut back on not just the amount of waste. For me, it's mostly about waste, but I think for lots of people, budget is a huge thing. Whereas like, mm -hmm. obviously, yeah, I would like to not spend that much money, but I don't need permission to not spend money. <laughs> so um, the doing the Chinese gift exchange or the secret Santa where either everybody just buys one gift and either you open them up and kind of fight over who gets what or you're assigned a person so that you can get a more thoughtful gift. Um, so that's one way that you can within your family. So if you have those people that, you know, really insist on gift giving and it's not the holidays if we don't all have something to open instead of everyone buying for everyone, um, everybody will just choose one person from a hat or however you want to do it so that you're just buying one thoughtful gift rather than a bunch of junk. Um, yeah. But there have been so many really fun takes on um, how to do a secret Santa or a Chinese gift exchange. I know at my mom's office every year they used to do one and it was only for ornaments. So there was a set budget and everybody would buy an ornament and that's all that it would be for the Christmas tree. Or at one of my past jobs, the boss would have everybody make a gift and there was no buying. Like you had to make a gift for a, sp a specific person. Um, it was at an art gallery. So everybody was super creative and had different talents. So like you'd have one person that would like make some delicious food. Somebody else would sew an outfit. Somebody else would make a stuffed animal. Someone else would make jewelry. Or um, one of my girlfriends made me a book out of handmade paper um, with different that's so cool yeah like it's really really neat so kind of taking it to the extreme where it's only for one person and it has to be handmade um yeah which i thought was really cool have you participated in any interesting gift exchanges i actually uh, and for um i've always heard it as being called christmas roulette um, um where you everyone brings one gift and then you just pick from the pile, you open it, and then you can either take it or steal it sort of thing. Um, and I had it until uh, my partner's family, uh, every Christmas, that's what they do, is they uh, all bring one gift, and it's usually themed with a letter. So oh, it's like uh, they did S the first year, and then the second year was E, and then the third year was B, and you just had to find a gift that, was associated with that letter or started with that letter. Um, and it was really cool. And I, I liked how it was very simple in that you only had to get one gift. And it wasn't even necessarily a gift for a particular person. It was just something to add to it. Um, and there was some like people would throw in like these 
complicated like three-tiered gifts where there is like poetry involved or riddles where you'd open it and there'd be like a face mask and you had to wear the face mask as part of the gift and then whoever was left wearing the face mask there was like another closed gift that you weren't allowed to open until the end of the game and if you were wearing the mask at the end of the game you got this other gift um, so uh yeah, it was it was interesting. That's really the only experience I, I've tried to initiate Secret Santa with my own like little nuclear family. Yeah. Um, we did it one year, and it and kind of just like it went good. But um, my mom was pretty upset that she could only had to buy gifts for one person, <laughs> so it wasn't the most uh, successful thing we've ever done. And now we've just kind of gone back to um, you know giving gifts when you. Um, I give gifts when I find something particularly uh, special for a person or I don't give gifts. I just spend time with them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show my love and appreciation. Um, but now I'm old news. My, my mom has three grandchildren that um, she can spoil around Christmas. And that's, that's a whole new battle for my brother and my sister. in law. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which touch on some of the stuff before it goes away yeah. in the comments talking about buying local um and yes that has an absolutely huge impact not just on the waste that's created but especially right now during covid so many small businesses are really struggling and not only is it great for the planet to not be ordering on amazon but if we can really support those local make them brick and mortar shops um, and send mm. a little bit of extra love to local businesses that's really huge um, and also, if you are ordering online, I always say, like, please, no plastic packaging, but it's so much easier when you're in a store to just throw it in your own bag or carry it out. And it's in terms of just the material waste and the packaging waste, much, much easier to avoid. But um, yeah, small businesses need our support and right now. Just on the note of ordering things online, I remember you telling me about how um, when you ask for no plastic, um, and when they give you that like brown paper instead, um, you keep it, don't you? Yeah, I was going to talk about that when we got into wrapping, which is, I think we're pretty much done. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on for gifts before we dive into wrapping and how we can create last days that way? I'm going to just say one thing, and I'm going to quote the fabulous and legendary RuPaul um, has a song that's titled Christmas is All About Love. And so... Christmas is all about love. <laughs> People who love you don't need gifts to know that you love them. You yeah. just have to tell them that you love them. Absolutely. Well, and even if like gift giving is your love language, there are so many gifts that you can give that aren't material gifts. So just rethinking yeah, what it would look like. Absolutely. But yes, going on to, so I have a box. I've actually got like little sprinkles of stuff all over the place in front of me here. When I order stuff online, I always ask for no plastic packaging because oh, you ever ordered something and then you have those giant it's not even bubble wrap it's like air pockets like just plastic holding huge pillows of air. <laughs> i can't stand why? It. I know. Why? it's awful it's awful it's so dumb but anyway so i had this box here i had to order a sample for um a thing for art ventures and this paper the packing paper that they put in i'm going to try to not talk while i do this because i anticipate it'll be a bit noisy but all year throughout the entire year whenever anything comes in a package i always keep the packing paper i'm going to make noise and i will flatten it out as best i can and then if you have an old wrapping paper tube, you don't have paper towel anymore, but paper towel tubes would work well. Um, or if you don't, you don't need one at all. You can just kind of fold it over. Yes, boo to bubble wrap. Boo um, bubble wrap. <laughs> and I just roll it into itself. So I end up with, and I continue adding, like this I'll actually add to a different hole. I continue adding it on. This actually was um, the lining of a dog food bag, which I'm totally using to wrap Christmas presents in because it's like an inside layer. No dog food actually touched this. But yeah, I just continue to wrap it up. Like there's several different packing papers or cardboard papers or um, this is maybe too late for Christmas this year. If you do not have a local framer, like a custom framing shop, 
in your life. Every time I've met somebody who owns a framing, framing shop, the owners are so lovely. They're so kind. Um, it's another local business. Framing gifts is such, such, such a great idea. I've definitely given custom framed presents and it's a bit pricey, but it's always absolutely beautiful. So this is someone you might not know that you need in your life is a custom framer, but you absolutely do. Um, so some of my paper from my framing jobs gets rolled up in here too. And this is what I use for all of the presents under the tree. So um, not all of them, many of them. So here's one that I've wrapped. This tag is actually from an old Christmas card that I cut up at the end of the season. So somebody gave me that. Yes. Card. And this is just tool from the reuse center that oh, cool. I have stashed away. So I like, this is a couple of years. It just lives with my Christmas supplies. Um, but there's tons of other stuff. Like if you use t-shirt yarn, that was an old t-shirt that had like rips and holes and stains. Um, so you could use that as a ribbon, actual like ribbon meant to be used as ribbon. You can reuse every year. Um, so I just kind of tend to collect and hold on to these types of things and keep them all together. But the wrapping paper I store, we have an old tall garbage can downstairs. Um, so it's accessible year round. It's not like just at Christmas time I can reach it. Otherwise, by the time Christmas comes around, it wouldn't all be together and usable. So just having it accessible so that as these things come into my home, I can kind of reformat them or upcycle them or put them somewhere usable um, has been super helpful. So that's, that's how we're wrapping most of our gifts under the tree this year. So awesome. <laughs> and as a fan of earth tones, the brown paper is really nice. It's, it's like classy, but in, in like this, modern like earthy waste reductionist way I well my stepmom actually when I was a kid and I I never appreciated how much my parents and when I say my parents I mean my mom and then I mean my stepmom because my dad and my stepdad let's be honest they could care, could care less I think but uh yeah my stepmom always used a roll of butcher's paper um, so she still bought paper new, but it was recyclable and it was just that brown natural aesthetic. And she had these wire bows that she handmade and every year she used the same bows. And then at my mom's house, I had, and I shared a picture of it. I don't know if you can see it behind me. I don't know. Um, just this cloth advent calendar um, that has these little pockets in it. So yeah, all or like reusable Christmas bags is another one. So I sewed that out of Christmas fabric and I'm not a seamstress, but I figured it out. Um, and another old Christmas card and that's another t-shirt. Super cool. And yeah, that's another alternative you can use to wrapping paper is fabric. Cause how we do, all probably- How do I avoid wasting my Christmas with my in-laws? <laughs> Sorry. Very clever. We have long time listener, first time commenter. How do I avoid <laughs> wasting Christmas with my in-laws? It's COVID. Also, are we hyper real made a very good point about brown paper um it's you can draw on it so yeah. it's way more fun to have around because you can draw your own designs on the paper and that's a great activity for kids too if you're um if you have children or nieces and nephews or grandchildren and you want to like wrap presents with them for their parents or their siblings um you can find brown paper wrap it up and then you can draw on it together and that adds it a, like a little personal touch to it which is super cool um, so thanks for sharing. Um, also, thanks, Mark. I appreciate the comment. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, just on the topic of how to the different uh, methods that we can have for wrapping presents or presenting presents, um, you know, um, like I was saying, um, childcare with my brother and sister in law with their newborn twins has given me a lot of time to have conversations with them as parents about um, reducing waste. And I was talking to them about wine and waste and they were like, this is so cool. That's a great idea to have conversation or about waste around the holidays because yeah, it is very wasteful. And um, one of the things that I brought up was wrapping paper and just about how um, wasteful wrapping paper is. And so we were kind of brainstorming through conversation alternatives. And one of the things my brother brought up was that they had saved all the gift bags that they had gotten yes. um, from people giving, um, gifts to the twins because lots of people had just dropped off gifts on their doorstep um, and they came in gift bags and it dawned on me right there and I was so happy while my brother was talking about all these gift bags because he was like you know we could 
we could reuse those, right? And I was like, you could reuse those, but you could also, if you gave everyone in your family uh, like a single gift bag that they could customize, that was like their gift bag for every Christmas and every birthday, and they just kept through their life. And then as the kids grow up, they could add to it and customize it and do different things with it. And you just have the same gift bag that you just keep with you. And then you put all their gifts inside when it's their birthday or it's Christmas. And then everyone has this personalized gift bag. And I thought that was so wholesome and cute. And I got really excited because like, that's such a beautiful idea to everyone have their own customized gift bag that they just reuse over and over again. And so uh, I'm glad that I had my brother and my sister-in-law to like bounce ideas off of and get that inspiration because I want to do that now. Yeah, and then she sure. will be like, this is my gift bag. If you ever have a gift for me, put it in this bag and then I'll open it and be like, oh my gosh, thank I you. I love that. Well, and I think if ever there's resistance to ideas like that, it's, oh, well, where am I supposed to store it? But I mean, everybody that has any kind of gift wrapping anything especially the disposable like use once and it's done I find that stuff takes up way more room like you probably have three rolls that have like this much paper that's not enough to throw out but it's not enough to actually do anything with and then you've got five million different bags that are half full of either this string or this ribbon or these bows or like it takes up so much room and it's just we look at it as well once you throw it out it's gone but there's still the leftovers and that space could just be dedicated towards these reusables or towards these intentional things that get used more frequently and don't get thrown out when they're done. So it's just a matter of shifting what the purpose of that space is. Yeah. yeah we store them anyway, right? We absolutely Yeah, that's my sister-in-law, James. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Jade. Yeah, so no, I think uh, just switching what it is that we're storing and being more intentional with our space as well. I have a basement shelf of gift bags, one bag of Christmas bags, one bag of birthday boys, bags, not boys, and <laughs> one bag of blank bags. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I'm trying to um, phase out. I used to bring lots of the, the extra stuff that we were done with to the reuse center. And actually, I had acquired most of it from the reuse center in the first place. But um, now that that resource isn't available to us, it's definitely... Uh -huh. I was going to say, for those of you who are listening and don't know, um, the city of Edmonton does have a reuse center um, that you can take and donate um, particular things that they organize into. It's kind of like a big open warehouse um, where they organize things by category and you can go in there and grab stuff. And I believe they charge you by weight. Correct me if I'm wrong, Emma. Yeah, it's just five bucks. It used to be for the for I think like a hundred kilograms, but now it's five bucks for fi or 50 and now it's 10. I don't know. It's I really have important. gotten a lot of stuff and like heavy stuff, like books and magazines. And I've never managed to spend more than $5 there. Yeah. So it's a really cool um, place. And uh, I'm glad that the city of Edmonton has that. I'm grateful that the city of Edmonton has that program and the compost school and you know the city of Edmonton does a lot with their 25 year waste strategy um, so I'm grateful to live in a city that you know um, takes waste reduction seriously or is starting to transition in that way and for those of you who are just joining us uh, this is obviously waste free Edmonton uh, along with art adventure both Emma and I are volunteers with waste free Edmonton uh, which is a grassroots volunteer led organization um, that is geared our mission is to make Edmonton the most waste reductionist city in all of the world we want people in a couple of years to talk and come to Edmonton and be like wow they achieved zero waste like how did they do that or um, uh, I want Edmonton to be famous for being the most waste conscious city on the planet. And I hope you want that too. And you should come hang out with us more and join us in that journey. Follow Waste Free Edmonton on our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, because um, we'd love to have you participate in this journey because it's for everyone. And uh, we can all help each other become waste zero, or zero waste superheroes. I just want to share one more person commented that they've had wrapping paper circulating for the last 30 years. 
And what? the kids are super careful when they open it. She said, watching, I can't see the name of the person anymore. It's kind of faded in the comments, but that watching the kids open the presents so carefully so the paper can be a delight. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. Um, that is we'd beautiful. love to hear more of those stories too. So as we're going through this kind of holiday time together, if you are practicing anything to help reduce your own waste or have tips to share, um, with other Edmontonians or that you just want to share with us, we would love if you could share on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever social media you're using. Um, you can mention us in the comments, uh, Waste Free Yeg, or use hashtag Waste Free Y-E-G as well so that we can see what you're up to and help circulate it and share a little bit of that extra Waste Free love around the city. I love hearing new ideas and how I can incorporate those into my life. Uh, like, you know, I had never thought of saving that paper for wrapping paper that you get from ordering things online. So yeah. I'm glad that you brought that into my life. Mm -hmm. I, Santa this year, I think is still using traditional store bought, not recyclable wrapping paper. Because Santa, come on, you're not going to get no cookies if you're too big to wasteful. I know. So um, just, just Santa we'll be using that. Um, but hopefully we can, you know, write Santa a letter so that next year he knows that his elves can use not that and that they can also use these possibly special Santa branded fabric bags, for example, Yay. from the North Pole. Um, so yeah, finding, finding little ways, but yes, Christmas or the holidays, whatever it is everyone celebrates looks so different from person to person. And whether you buy gifts at all or fewer gifts, or you just want to be more sustainable about the way you're choosing, <laughs> no wine for Mr. Claus, uh, <laughs> or if you just want to be more sustainable about the way that you're wrapping your gifts. Um, oh, hi, Misty. We would love to see what what that looks like for you, how we can support you on your journey. Waste Free Edmonton is hosting a Zoom meetup. So that's going to be December 14th. Uh, Sean, do you want to talk a little bit more about what that's going to look like? Uh, so we're doing a, a holiday hangout that is hosted on Zoom. It's going to be December 14th. Um, it's going to be from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, we wanted to have an event um, similar to this, where people can talk about, um, you know, waste around the holidays, their own personal waste journey. Um, that's not just Emma and I talking. We want to hear from all of you and have all of you participate. But also our, our goal uh, as Waste for Edmonton is to create a community of waste conscious individuals so that as a greater whole of society and as a city, we can be more waste conscious and we do that by having conversations with each other. The best way to learn is to gain the wisdom from your fellow humans. So I know all the most important lessons in my life have mostly been learned from talking to other people or having other people instill their wisdom on me. Um, so I just want to hear all of your wisdom, all of your stories, all of your tips and tricks, your struggles. If you have a hard time, I know for me, um, I was talking about earlier in, the, um, in this live that I am a semi-professional coffee drinker. And one of the hardest things for me was to stop using um, disposable cups. Um, because those are not recyclable. Um, and so it, 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 that was a journey for me to break that habit and start carrying around um, a reusable thermos and making coffee at home before I go to work or um, go to school. Um, and, you know, no one is perfect. And we're all somewhere on the spectrum of our waste reduction journey. And there's no shame for wherever you are on your journey, whether you're a zero waste pro and you fit your yearly waste into a mason jar, or you're just having that glass shattering realization about the wasteful habits of our society. Um, we want to be here for, me, for you. We want to hear from you. We want to help you. We want you to help us to make Edmonton the most um, sustainable city on the planet. So yeah, I'm glad that we had people here. I'm glad that we concepted this wine and waste chat. Yeah. I love chatting with you, Emma. Likewise, um, likewise. it's been great. Um, so if you guys did have any last questions, any last nuggets to share, we have one or two minutes, I think, before our live stream will get cut off. 
Uh, but otherwise, Wine and Waste is going to be Sean and I the first Wednesday of the month. So if you have any other ideas that you want us to kind of tackle, um, we'd love to hear about that as well. We hope that you had a good time joining us, that you felt a little bit less isolated on this Wednesday night. Um, and I hope that we get to see you guys all again soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Eventbrite for um, the 14th goes live after this. I'm also going to be creating a Facebook event um, and then I'll, we'll be sharing on Instagram and Twitter. And please, like, it, come hang out with us. It's, it's super informal. We just want to talk to you about waste reduction, talk to you about life, see how you're doing um, during this difficult time because, because it's been a difficult time for us personally, but also us as an organization, we miss having in-person events. We miss meeting up with you for green drinks. We miss, you know, going to festivals and talking to people about waste reduction. Um, like I said, we were going to have a waste uh, uh, secondhand fashion show that we are really looking forward to having. Um, we want to do all those things with you. We want to build community with you. Um, and so we, we'd love for you to hang out with us. Absolutely. I'm seeing lots of thank yous in the comments. Thank, yes, thank you, you for guys. joining thank us. Thank you. It was so great. <laughs> Good Yay. night. Good night, everyone. And remember, um, do your best. There's no shame in not being perfect. And good luck on your holiday waste reduction yes. conversations. <laughs> cheers. Oh, cheers, Emma. <laughs> All right. I've actually never exited live before. Okay, so you're going to end the live as soon as you end. We want to try to save the video. So there should be, I think my screen looks different than yours, a little X or something. And then as soon yep. as that's gone, you'll see a little save video thing and hit that right away because it'll disappear. Okay. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. Have a lovely night.